I look at our last 10 years and it's like a, a stone in a brook. Once the rock's been in there a few years, it looks differently and it's, it smooths off all the rough edges. And I just look forward to what 10 more years is, of this is gonna do for us uh, and, and especially for our kids because that's really important to us. best worship service I've ever been a part of. One of the things I love about it is it's so well designed, but it is totally non-performative. There's no one standing up in front of you, giving the big solo or anything. And so it's, you're encouraged to sing. Even though you might be singing a really serious song, the joyfulness comes from everybody singing together. privilege to be with you in this place at this time. Um, praise the Lord for his goodness and his faithfulness to Cornerstone Presbyterian Church. We're here to celebrate that and to make... You look at a church and you look at the people, you look at the leadership, you look at the teachings. And the thing that I tell people about Cornerstone is it's got all those elements of things. Not that we're perfect, but it's hard to find a church that has all the things that this one has. And I think that that's really important to us. It is a delight and a joy to be gathered with the whole of the Cornerstone family in one room. This is a history-making moment. This has never happened before. Here we are together to join our voices, arrayed around the throne of grace, to lift up praises to our God as we rejoice over His kindness in giving birth to Cornerstone some 10 years ago. I walk through those doors and I'm grateful that I get to worship with the body of members here. The way that we do court worship, the liturgy, the scripture alone, the Westminster Confession, I think that those are the things that are the meat and that, that make it all so real and make it real for our kids that they know these things. It's the truth that's here. I think that those distinctives of worship, it's, it's orthodox, but that it has a, a, a really just very intentional rhythm to it. Communion every Sunday, I think, is, is really kind of vital. So celebratory and so gracious and yet serious. It, it wasn't flippant, uh, but it was joyful. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. I think we both have an appreciation for the ministry team, you know, our leaders looking for truth and, and teaching it no matter how that presents itself. I've been involved uh, with the men's Thursday morning group, which has been delightful to uh, remind me, not, not who I am, but whose I am. We get together early in the morning, and that's a great way to start a morning. The men of this church really love their pastor. They love all of their pastors and the leadership is so humble and they're so good at loving each other. They really set a good example. And as a result, I think the women of the church are really happy. I have been involved in women's Bible studies for years. I started a mom's group recently, so we're trying to start that up, which has been a lot of fun, trying to get some young moms together and trying to encourage them. We got involved in the home fellowship group almost immediately, and that's been great as couples and singles to get together and just share in fellowship and food and looking back at the previous Sunday's message and digging in deeper. A small church is where there's gonna be the most meaningful impact because it feels like with COVID changing everything and um, you know people finding community right in there where they actually live, um, you know, I think things, a small church is where it's at. I feel like we kind of all week long are either interacting with people from Cornerstone or at the church actually doing stuff at Cornerstone. So it's both those formal and informal. We're, we're just together a lot with Cornerstone people. Much harder to be unknown in a small church. If you're coming to a small church, you gotta be in community. It kind of forces you to be a community. 
As we enter into the presence of the Lord together today, certainly many of us need the assurances of that kind of promise from the Lord and from the scriptures to stay. Because Nate and all of the pastors are so clear in their message, and we can rely on, on knowing that that's the truth and that we can share it with people, he goes to the grocery store, he's in line at the grocery store and he shares with somebody. Cornerstone Presbyterian Church was founded with a vision of being a church that would be in the city of Franklin that would be for the city of Franklin. A congregation that wanted to preach faithfully the Word of God, to be a praying community, a serving community, a community on mission for Christ in the very center of town. Well, I hope that when people think about Cornerstone in the downtown area that they think about Jesus and that we are just sinners who need Jesus trying to serve people who also need Jesus and that we're trying to be the hands and feet. Um, disciples who make disciples is our mission statement and so I hope that that's the impact that we're having in Franklin. We've seen the Lord grow this congregation, both in its numbers and in terms of its maturity and its impact. And we have been very delighted to see that the name of Christ is going forth at the very center of Franklin, this beautiful place, to, to the ends of the earth. The immediate presence upon the community in being downtown um, would be one of the, the, the main impacts that it has because of the gospel, like the preaching of the gospel each and every Sunday, that draws so many different people from different walks of life. I hope we're able to have a larger and larger impact on the city of Franklin, on the community, and just bring more people to Christ and see more people's lives changed and grow because of it. Just continue what we're doing, building relationships, just being visible in our community, just showing the love of Christ to those around us.